the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Another grand day in the Outlaw Posse neighborhood. And today we're going to talk about Big 12 predictions, Big 12 media days, and the fact that Brett Goldmark has made some comments about possible expansion in the near future. Also going to give you some Oklahoma tidbits and recruiting because they're pretty hot this summer, as I like to do. From time to time, I'm going to start out with a random topic of the day because it always seems to help me purge those with thin skin, those that don't want you to have an opinion of your own, that want to censor you. So I'm always up for that. And today's random topic of the day is Megan Rapinoe. She is a women's soccer player that is gay. She's came out and basically said that transgenders should be allowed to be in women's sports, which is a made-up word, by the way. So I don't see how you can allow something to be in your sport that don't exist. You see, and then she says, well, if you don't acknowledge it, then you're transphobic. How can you be phobic about something that's a made-up word? Here's what transgender is. Right here. That's what transgenders are. They're Smurfs. They don't exist, man. It's a figment of your imagination. They don't exist. They don't exist. And Martina Navratilova, who is a legendary tennis player and also gay, Shouldn't even be about gay. Shouldn't even be about sexual preference. But they put that put this out there, so that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying it. She came out and basically agreed with us that these transgender, whatevers, these made up people, they want to come in and take women's sports away from women because they're not good enough to compete in their biological sport. All this is is men that are gay, and they got this made up word transgender. To try to hide behind because they're not good enough to compete in their biologically fair sport. And Megan Rapinoe is only doing this to try to get in the news. All Megan Rapinoe cares about is keeping that spotlight because we all know Megan Rapinoe is retiring after this year from soccer. So she's trying to keep herself relevant by staying on this agenda, this transgender agenda that's been going on that's now played out. She's, she's very oblivious to what's going on, I guess. Because the worms turned on this, people. <laughs> and it's just not right, man. And they know it's not right. And that's why the World uh, Sports Organization, I think it was, the people that, that administer the rules and the laws of the Olympic sports, have came out and basically said that transgenders are not going to compete in women's sports. And what gay people don't realize, I'm taking up for you. These are bigots. These are bit people that are bigoted against their own sexual preference. These are gay men that want to take over women's sports because they're not good enough in their biologically fair sport to compete. It'd be just like Christian Leitner, who was a middle of the road NBA player, probably not even middle of the road, great college player, but probably not even a top 1,000 players of all time. You could take Christian Leitner and put him in the WNBA, and he would be a transgender version of Michael Jordan. <laughs> but let's just go ahead and get to the show. Again, Outlaw Posse is now in effect and as promised, the Four Horsemen shout out of the day are as follows Heath Stokes, Kuz's Corner, David Cummings, and Rob are mounted up and saddled up, got their badges. They're in the Outlaw Posse and they're ready to help me with today's invasion. And if you want to get your badge and you want to be a part of the Outlaw Posse, all you got to do is hit that little join button next to the subscribe button. It's just $2.99 a month, 75 cents a week. And if you're on an Apple phone, I think you'll have to go to a computer or laptop because for some reason Apple, it just don't mesh with YouTube memberships. Now, getting right to it here. Seems like the Big 12 had a pretty interesting media day. Uh, had a few predictions. Um, Athens come out with theirs as well. And that's the ones I went by. But basically, what they predicted... In the Big 12 predictions here for 
Texas and Oklahoma's last year, by the way. Ironically, they got Texas and Oklahoma one and two. They got Texas number one, Oklahoma number two, Kansas State number three, TCU number four, number five is Texas Tech, number six is Kansas, seven is Baylor, Oklahoma State's number eight, o Okie Pokey State, I love it when I call them that, UCF, Central Florida, Iowa State, BYU is number 11, Houston's number 12, Cincinnati's 13, and West Virginia at 14th is what they predicted in Athens. And that's been basically about the same with just about everybody with a few teams intertwined and moved about. You know, I would have moved a few around. There's a few in here I do not agree with, uh, as I've told my boy, Justin at Cousins Corner, he's a big West Virginia guy. So, you know, I told him, you know, I don't think his team's going to finish 14th. Uh, Cincinnati looks a little hollow to me. I definitely could see West Virginia being better than them. Houston, sort of iffy as well. You know, they're, they're one of the new members in the uh, Big 12 this year. I could see BYU and Central Florida doing rather well this year. You, it, it seems like Central Florida is doing pretty good in recruiting with Gus Malzahn down there. But I could definitely see West Virginia being at least ninth or tenth in the conference. As far as the top four or five, um, probably switch one or two around. Texas does seem like they're the favorite this year. Oklahoma seems like they might have a bounce back year as well. Kansas State is the defending Big 12 champion, but I don't really mean much uh, coming in this year. So that's the bad thing about these magazines and these predictions. They always seem like they just go – uh, chalk with what happened last year, so it's hard to get a real good uh, prediction sometimes. I would probably flip-flop Texas Tech and TCU. I'd also move Kansas down some. Everybody's on this Kansas bandwagon, man. They done fell in love with the Jayhawks. Uh, probably some of the most loud, outlandish helmets I've ever seen. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like it's pretty good. But like I said, I would interchange a few of these teams. Uh, Oklahoma State at eighth. I could probably see them be a little bit higher, maybe sixth. But now let's get to the expansion talk. Brett Yormark was asked bluntly by a few people about his plans for expansion, and he has basically said that he is looking to expand. That he would like to stay at 14. And I keep getting this narrative from a lot of people out there in Big 12 circles that if the Big 12 does expand, they do not want to go the G5 route again uh, because the networks are not really wanting to pay for that. But something sort of came to me, and Brett Yormark sort of, in a way, alluded to it, that, you know, Colorado and Arizona are the hot names to go into the Big 12 right now. If the things don't work out for them in the Pac-12, they've pushed back their TV deal yet again for like the 17th time. If that don't work out, and I don't think it will, they'll get Colorado and Arizona. Now, the big question there is if the Colorado and Arizona do pull the trigger, do Utah and Arizona State pull the trigger as well, or do they try to tough it out and see what they can get as far as the Pac-12 goes and getting more membership? And another name that's being floated around that's pretty interesting to me is Oregon State. I didn't really think too much about Oregon State. People brought them up a few weeks back, and I was like, no, nah, I ain't no way to go up to Oregon State. But if Arizona State and Utah – continue to drag their feet, Oregon State would be wise to pounce on that because Oregon and Washington are not going to stay around if Colorado and Arizona did. Oregon and Washington going to go to Big Ten. That's just, that's just going to happen. I really believe that's going to happen. So Oregon State at that point, if they could just get in Brett's ear and say, hey, look, if Arizona State and Utah are going to act all sort of iffy about it, we're right here for the taking. That'd be a wise thing for Oregon State to do. But I was thinking that if you do get two or three packs, pack schools, your uh, networks might come around. They might sort of compromise a little bit and allow for at least one or two, maybe even three um, G5 schools. And I got a list right here of G5 schools that's been mentioned as possibilities to go to the Big 12. San Diego State, Connecticut, Memphis, Tulane, UTSA, that's Texas, San Antonio, South Florida, and then a couple of 
outside of the box kind of thinking, Villanova, um, Gonzaga, Georgia State, Fresno State. And a lot of those names look a little out, look, 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 look a little reaching. But the reason why they bring up Texas San Antonio is because they did lose the Austin market in a few years back. As you know, they lost Texas A&M as well. And they did replace that with Houston, but that's just one. So San Antonio is a pretty big market, and uh, it's pretty close to Austin, so it probably rankle the feathers of the Texas people who would do that. If you want to piss Texas off, then invite Texas San Antonio into the league, in my opinion. <laughs> now, the other ones that were mentioned, San Diego State's the captain obvious choice. Everybody wants San Diego State. Pac-12, I think, is really screwing themselves by not cornering San Diego State. Now, if for some reason San Diego State is off the mark and they end up joining the Pac-12, there's always Fresno State. Now, I didn't really think much about Fresno State either, but as I got to looking at Fresno State and some of their numbers, their fans and their alumni are very supportive. So it would be a market in the California market that Brett Yormark's looking for. So if they can't get San Diego State... Fresno State would be a good ad. And you're like, well, what about UConn? A lot of people are talking about UConn. UConn actually has a Division I football program that will help them as opposed to Gonzaga, who's also been mentioned. I think UConn, they actually used to be decent in football a few years back. So that could come around again to where they're a decent football program. But they're definitely a great basketball ad. They won national championship last year. Of course, they're a great basketball ad. They've won numerous national championships in basketball. So I think that would definitely be one that the networks would be down with. They'd be okay with UConn. Now, the other ones, I don't know. They might be iffy. Memphis, nice size market, run-down stadium. They get their facilities upgraded. Memphis would be a great market for the uh, the Big 12 to get into. The Tennessee market, get around, you know, close to Nashville as you can. Um, then you got Tulane, who is down in the Louisiana market, the New, New Orleans market, nice little fertile recruiting ground, Louisiana. And then South Florida, who I mentioned as well, they're in the Tampa Bay area. It would be, it would give you two major metropolitan areas in the state of Florida. People don't think about that. But South Florida actually used to be pretty decent in football. They just fell on fell on some hard times here recently. So all those names out there that there's being bandied about all have their their good qualities and their bad qualities. But you guys and girls tell me what you think about all that. You think they could just, like, would the networks be down with maybe if they met in the middle somewhere and maybe got Colorado and Arizona and then added two G5 schools? I think they would be. I think that would be a good combination. Because Utah and Arizona State acting all funny. But if they're wise, and what will probably end up happening, in my opinion, is Colorado and Arizona will come to the Big 12. And then, as much to their chagrin, I think Arizona State and Utah will come on board as well. And then there won't be any G5 schools getting an invited. And San Diego State will hopefully at that point be able to get in the Pac-12. If not, the Pac-12 is just going to fold and go away. Or they're going to be the Mountain West with a Pac-12 mask on, as I've said, ad nauseum. Now, I also had a few tidbits I wanted to touch on before I get out here today. Oklahoma recruiting seems like it's really, really on a roll here lately this summer. A 2025 recruit, Gus Cordova, out of Austin, Texas. I think he's like a three- or four-star defensive end. It says that he uh, is considering Oklahoma his leading candidate right now, as well as the big ones that are going to commit this month, I think. Defensive tackle Jaden Jackson, who committed to Miami, but they said that he's since backed off of that. He may be about to flip to Oklahoma. Now, the reason why that's big is because Jaden Jackson is a great player, but on top of that, he's teammates with David Stone of IMG Academy, and Jaden made a tweet the other day that said it would be great for us to be able to play our college ball together, brother. So wherever Jaden goes, David Stone may be following, whether he decides to stay with Miami or if he's going to flip to Oklahoma like people are projecting him to. If you can get Jaden, you might get David Stone too, and that defensive line would be looking really good. And we all know Oklahoma needs to shore up 
the trenches going into the SEC, and that would be a, a great way to do it. Also, Taylor Tatum is set to commit July 21st. You know, at first he was liking USC a little bit, but now it seems like from what the crystal ballers are saying that he is now leaning to Oklahoma. And if that happens, that's going to be yet another stoking the fire for me. I'm going to get on here and I'm going to be grilling the hell out of somebody. <laughs> for damn sure. That's all I got to say about that today. If you don't mind, there's a little heart down here, heart thanks button, hit that, throw a one-time donation in there, or you can join the Outlaw Posse like the guys that I called out earlier. You can get your badge, get deputized, join the Outlaw Posse, just $2.99 a month, 75 cents a week. I also have a cash app that I'll put in the description of this video. You can hit that and cut the middleman, middleman out if you want to. Give all the money to the program. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams' classes now officially dismissed.